Good morning, everyone. Today, back with my important with the Hallows. And I have finished on page 70. Um, let's continue. No, 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 no. I, 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 of course not, said Hannah. This concerned by this sudden change of subject. Sweet of you, she replied, and she smiled as she left the scullery. From the moment on, Mrs. Weasley kept uh, Harry and Ron and Hermione so busy with preparations for the wedding that they hardly had time to think. The kindest explanation of his of this behavior would have been that Mrs. Weasley wanted to distract them all from thoughts of Madai and the terrors of their recent journey. After two days of non-stop, um, non-stop colory cleaning of color matching flavors, ribbons and flowers of the enorming and the garden, and helping Mrs. Weasley cook vast batches of um, canapes. However, Harry thought to suspect her of different mo mo motive. All the jobs she handed out seemed to them. keep him, Ron and Hermione, away from one another. He had not had a chance to speak to the two of them alone, alone since the first night when he had told them about Voldemort torturing Ollivander. I think Mom thinks that we, if she can stop the three of us getting together and planning, she'll be able to delay your leaving. Um, Jenny told Harry in an undertone as they laid the table for dinner on the third night of her stay. And then what does she think is going to happen? Harry muttered. Someone else might kill off Voldemort while she's holding us here, make Volo events. He had spoken without thinking and saw Jenny's face whiten. So it's true, she said. That's um that's what you're trying to do. I I not I not I was joking," said Harry evasively. They started at each other, and there was something more than shock in Jenny's expression. Expression suddenly, Harry became aware that this was the first time that he did, he had been alone with her since those stolen hours and included all um corners of the Hogwarts grounds. He was. Sure, she was remembering them too. Both of them jumped as the door opened, and Mr. Weasley, Kingsley, and Bill walked in. They were often joined up by the other, uh, by the other, other order members, for dinner now, because the barroom had replaced the number twelve Grimmauld Place as headquarters. Mr. Weasley had explained that after the death of Dumbledore, the secret keeper, each of the people to whom Dumbledore had confided Grim, um, Grimmauld Place's location had become a secret keeper in turn. And uh, as there are being a round of twenty of us that greatly deludes to the power of the Nefidelia's charm, twenty times as many opportunity for the Death Eaters to get secret out of somebody. Um, we can't expect it to hold um, much longer. But surely Snape will have told Death Eaters their address by now, asks Harry. Well, Amanda, I set up a couple of curses against Snape in case he turns up them again. We hope they'll be strong enough to both to keep him out and to bind his tongue if he tries to talk up about the place. But we can't be sure. It would have been insane to keep using the place as headquarters now that its protection has become so shaky. The kitchen was so crowded that e that evening it was difficult to um, maneuver knives and forks. Harry found himself crammed beside Ginny. The unsaid things that had been had just passed between them made him wish they had been separated by a few more people. He was trying so hard to avoid brushing her arm uh, he could barely cut his chicken. No news about Madai? Harry asked Bill. Nothing, replied Bill. They had not been able to hold a funeral for Madai because Bill and Lupin had failed to recover his body. It had been difficult to know where he might have fallen, given the darkness and the confusion of the battle. The Daily Prophet hasn't said a word about him dying or about finding the body, Bill went on. But that doesn't mean it much. It's keeping a lot quiet these days. And they still haven't called a hearing about all the underage magic I used to speaking the Death Eaters? Harry called it across the table. Mr. Weasley, who shook his head. Because they know I had no choice, or because they don't want me to tell the world the Voldemort attacked me. The late, the later, I think, Scranger doesn't want to admit that you know who is so is as powerful as he is. Know that Azkaban seen a, seen a mass breakup. Yeah, why tell the public the truth? Said 
Harry clenching his knife so tightly that the faint scars on the back of his right hand stood out white against his skin. I must not tell lies. Isn't anyone at the ministry prepared to stand up to him? asked Ron angrily. Of course, Ron, but people are terrified, Mr. Weasley replied. Terrified that they will be the next to disappear. The children, the next to be attacked. There are nasty rumors going around. I, for one, don't believe the muggle studies professor at Hogwarts resigned. She hasn't been seen for weeks now. Meanwhile, Squimder remains shut up in his office all day. I just hope he's working on a plan. There was a pause in which Mrs. Weasley mag um, magicked empty plates on, uh, to the side and served a apple tart. We must decide how must decide how you will be disguised, Harry, said Flo. Once um, everyone had a pud pudding for the wedding, she added. When uh, he looks confused, of course, none of our guests are dedicated, but we cannot guarantee that they will not let something slip after they have had um, campaign. From this, Harry gathered that she still suspected Harry. Yes, good point, said Mrs. Weasley from the top of the table where she sat, spectacles perched on the end of her nose, scanning an immense list of jobs that she had scribbled on a very long piece of parchment. Now, Ron, have you cleaned out your room yet? Why? exclaimed Ron, slapping his thumb spoon down and glaring at his mother. Why does my room have to be cleaned out? Harry and I are fine with it that way. It is. We're holding your brother's, wet brother's wedding and here in a few days' time, young man. And are we getting married in my bedroom? asked Ron furiously. No, so why in the name of morning Saggy left? Don't talk to your mother like that, said Mr. Weasley firmly, and do as you're told. Ron scowled at both his parents, then picked up his spoon and attacked the last few mouthfuls of his apple tart. I can help some of it's my mess, Harry told Ron, but Mrs. Weasley cut across him. No, Harry dear, I'd rather um, I'd much rather you helped Arthur mark out the um, kitchens and Hermione. I'd be uh, ever so grateful if you changed the sheets for Monsieur and Madame Delacour. And I know, and you know, they're arriving at eleven tomorrow morning. But as it turned out, there was a very little to do for the chickens. There's no need to uh, mention it to Molly, Mr. Wiz Mr. Weasley told Harry, blocking his access to the coop. But, uh, Tonks, um, Ted Tonks sent me most of what has, um, was left of Sirius to bike, and, uh, I'm hiding that maps to, say, keeping it in here. Fantastic stuff. There's an exotic gas skin, as I believe it's called the most magnificent factory, and it will be a great opportunity to find out how brakes work. I'm going to try and put it all back together again when Monday's not. I mean, when I've got time. When they returned to the house, Mrs. Weasley was nowhere to be seen. So Harry slipped, slipped it upstairs to Ron's attic bedroom. I'm doing it, I'm doing Oh, it was you, said Ron, relief, um, in relief, as Harry entered the room. Ron lay back down on the bed, which he had evidently just vacated. The room was just as messy as it had been all week, and the only change was that Hermione was now sitting in the front corner, a fluffy ginger cat, a cookshank, at her feet, sorting books, some of which Harry recognized as his own, into two enormous piles. Hi, Harry, she said, as she sat down, as he sat down on his um, um, camp bed. How did you manage to get away? Oh, Ron's mom forgot that she asked Dinny and me to change the sheets yesterday, said Hermione. She drew, she threw the nomology and the grammatica on the part and the rise and fall of the dark house onto the other. We were just talking about Mad-Eye, one told Harry. I reckon he might have survived. But Bill saw him hit by the killing curse, said Harry. Yeah, but Bill was under attack too, said Ron. How can he be sure what he saw? Even if the killing had just missed, mad I still fell about a thousand feet, said Hermione, now weighing Quidditch teams of Britain and the island in her hands. I could have used a shield charm. Flo said his wand splashed out of his hand, said Harry. Well, 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 all right, all right, how you wish. If you want him to be dead, said Ron grumpily, punching his pillow into a more comfortable shape.
Of course we don't want him to be dead, said Hermione, looking shocked. It's dreadful that he's dead, but we're being realistic. For the first time, Harry imagined Red Eye's body, broken as Dumbledore's had been. Yet with that one, uh, with that one eye still whizzing in his socket, he felt a stab of revulsion mixed up with a bizarre desire to laugh. The Death Eaters probably t uh, tidied up after themselves. And that's why no one's found him, said Ron wisely. Yeah, said Harry, like Bart Crouch turned into a bone and buried in Hagrid's front yard. They probably left him stick in a moody and stuffed him. Don't, squealed Hermione, startled. Harry looked over just in time to see her burst into tears and cover her copy of Spellman's, Spellman's syllabary. Oh no, said Harry, struggling to get up from the old camper. Hermione, I, I wasn't trying to upset but with a great creaking of rusty vest rings, Ron bounded off the bed and got there first. One arm around Hermione, and he finished. And he fished him in his jean pockets and withdrew a revolting-looking handkerchief that he had used to clean out the oven earlier. Hastily pulling out his wand, he pointed at the rag and said, "Tergio." The wand siphoned off most of the grease. Looking rather pleased with himself, Ron handed the slightly smoking handkerchief to Hermione. Oh, thanks, Ron. I'm, I'm sorry. She blew her nose and he coughed. It's just so, so awful, awful, isn't it? Right, right after Dumbledore, I just, just ne never imagined my eye dying some, somehow. He seemed so tough. Yeah, I know, said Ron, giving her a squeeze. But you know that he'd say to us if he were here. Constant uh, vigilance, said Hermione, mopping her eyes. That's right, said Ron, nodding. He'd tell us to learn from what happened to him. And what I've learned is not to trust that cowardly little squid mundungus. Um, Hermione gave a shaky laugh and leaned forward to pick up two more books. If seconds later, Ron had snatched his arm back from around her shoulders. She had trapped the monster book of monsters on his foot. The book had broken free from its restraining belt and snapped viciously at Ron's ankles. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Hermione cried as Harry wrenched the book from Ron's leg and retied it shut. What are you doing with all these, with all those books anyway? Ron asked, limping back to his bed. Just, just trying to decide which ones to take with us, said Hermione, when we're looking for the Horcruxes. Oh, of course, said Ron, clapping a hand to his forehead. I, I forgot we'll, we'll be hunting down Voldemort in the mobile library. Ha <laughs> ha, said Hermione, looking down at Spellsman's uh, celebrity. I, I wonder, uh, will we need to translate runes? It's, pro it's possible. Um, I think we'd better take it to be safe. He dropped the celebrity onto the larger of the two piles and picked up Hogwarts as history. Listen, said Harry. He had sat upright straight. Ron and Hermione looked at him with similar uh, mixtures of resign, resignation and uh, defiance. I, I know you said after Dumbledore's funeral that you wanted to come with me, Harry began. Here, here, we go, uh, here he goes, Ron said to Hermione, rolling his eyes. As we knew he would, Ron, she said, turning back to the, the books. You know, I think I will take Hogwarts as history, even if we're not going back there. I don't think I'd feel right if I didn't have it with... Listen, said Harry again. No, Harry, you listen, said Hermione. We're coming with you. That that was decided a month ago, years early. But shut up, um, um, Ron advised him. Are you sure you've um, thought this through? Um, Harry per uh, um, persisted. Let's see, said Hermione, slamming... Travels with Strauss onto the discarded pile with a rather fierce look. I've been packing for a day, so we're, we're ready to leave at a moment's notice, which, for your information, has included doing some pretty difficult magic, not to mention smuggling my eyes a whole stock of polyjuice potion right under Ron's mom's nose. I've also modified my parents' memories so that they convinced that they were called Wendell and Monica Wilkins, and that their life ambition is to go to move to Australia. Which they have, they now have done. That's to make it more difficult for Voldemort to track them down and interrogate them about me or you, because unfortunately I told them quite a bit about you. Assuming I survive our, our hunt for the Horcruxes, I'll find Mom and Dad and lift the enchantment. If I don't, well, I think I've I cast a good enough charm to keep them safe and happy. Wendell and Monica Wilkins don't know that they, they've they got a daughter, you see. Hermione's eyes were swimming with tears again. 
Ron got back off the bed, but his arm around her once more and found and Harry as they were reporting him for a lack of tact. Harry could not um, think of anything to say, not least because it was highly unusual for Ron to be teaching anyone else tact. I, I, I Hermione, I, I'm sorry, I, I didn't didn't realize that Ron and I know perfectly well that what might happen. If, if we come with you, well, we do, Ron, show Harry that you've done. Nah, he's just eating, said Ron. Go on, he needs to know. All right, Harry, come here. For the second time, Harry, uh, Ron withdrew his arms around Hermione and jumped over to the floor. Come on. Why? Harry asked, following Ron out of the room and to the tiny landing. Descendo, muttered Ron, pointing his wand at the low ceiling, and a hatch opened right over his head, and the ladder slid down to his feet. A horrible half-sucking, half-moaning sound came out of the square hall, along with an unpleasant smell like open drains. That's your goal, isn't it? asked Harry, who had never actually met the creature that sometimes disrupted the night, the nightly silence. Yeah, it is," said Ron, climbing the ladder. "Come on and have a come on and have a look at him." Harry followed Ron up the a few uh, short steps into the tiny attic space. His head and shoulders were in in the room before he caught sight of the creature curled up a few feet from him, fast asleep in the gloom, and its loud mouth wide open. Well, I think we'll leave it there, guys, for tomorrow. Uh, don't like to like, subscribe, and. Um, hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you next time in the next video. Don't miss it. And uh, I hope it will be quite exciting in this chapter because it is called a go in the pajamas. Maybe it will be funny. Anyway, um, it's time for good night. Good night.